what's up you guys? I am here to talk Emergence episode 5. We have a lot to cover so we're going to go right into it. Real quick, I did a live stream after the show aired at 11pm. That's at T3 Medias. I'll leave a link down below if you want to just watch our free forum conversation. Next week we're going to do it again. So if you want to head back to my channel, I believe we're going to do it on my channel next week. After the episode, if you want to come in and give your comments, we will look at your comments and respond to you. It's something that we're building. It's like an after show because I feel like after an episode airs, people want to talk about it right away. This episode, I'm going to do a recap a little bit more thorough than we did last night because obviously when I watch an episode, I miss things, so I have to watch it again to see if I miss anything, especially with the way this show is. It's very fast paced and they do throw a lot of information at us at once and it's really easy to blink or sneeze and completely miss something really, really important. So we're going to go through every little thing we can. The episode actually starts exactly where last week's took off. We have Benny in the car with April. April appears to be unconscious. A man approaches Benny. We see that Benny is obviously injured. He has been shot in the shoulder. A man approaches Benny with a gun. Unfortunately, we learn later on that April was killed from the incident. It's unclear if she was shot because they didn't really explain it. And Benny just kind of took off and ran away. And he ran right to Joe's house. The only reason the man doesn't actually shoot Benny because there's another witness there. The man from the truck that they hit approaches and asks if they are okay. And this sends the hitman racing away. He's got his gun like wide out there and he's just going running he's just like peace out yo i'm not gonna shoot him because i i really thought at this point they were all gonna be dead why does benny go to joe's house well we've seen in the past that the hospital is not really a safe place for people that kindred wishes to be dead back at the house joe and the family are cooking dinner piper wants to go to school and Ed announces that he is going to go for a job interview. We learn later that Ed is actually lying about where he wants to go during this time. We learn, unfortunately, that his cancer has returned. He tells Joe that he's going to be working part-time when indeed he's probably going to be going in for medical treatments. Not sure how it's going to work if Piper goes to school. I don't know if robots have ever been to school. I don't know if there's anything new she can learn that she hasn't learned. But there is a sense that Piper wants to be a normal kid. She doesn't remember if she's ever been to school. So I think that's an interesting desire for her. She obviously wants to be social. She enjoys her relationship with Mia. And she obviously enjoys her relationship with the family. This is something that she's never had before, possibly. It's possible that the town that she grew up in, she was surrounded by only robots. Or maybe the family that raised her or the family that she lived with was just people that were under Kindred's orders. And we still don't have answers as to what happened in that video, what the circumstances were when she blew a hole in that house and blew up everyone around her. We don't know. And honestly, last night we talked about this in the stream, that might not have even been Piper. That could have been a clone. And it's possible there are other Pipers out there that look exactly like her. I wouldn't be surprised if that's something we saw down the line. Benny comes busting into Joe's home with the kids there, shot and bleeding. Ed doesn't know what the heck to think. Here's another crazy situation happening around Joe ever since Piper has joined this family. Just crazy shit's been happening. And Betty coming in with a bullet wound to the chest is not surprising at this point. Like I said, Betty doesn't want to go to the hospital because there's a chance he's probably going to be killed if he goes there by one of Kindred's guys. We saw what he did with that morphine drip. That was not cool. So no doctors. Well, we are very lucky that Joe's friend is a doctor. Abby to the rescue. So Benny ran all the way to Joe's house on foot from the scene with a bullet wound to his chest. By the time he comes in, he's almost unconscious and he mutters off a license plate because that is the one thing he remembered. Now the girls were sent upstairs because Joe and Ed didn't want them seeing what was happening. But as usual, Piper can hear everything. So when Joe is trying to write down the license plate, Piper hears it and repeats it back from upstairs. Who knows how far of a distance she can actually hear conversations from. It's possible she might even have some type of enhanced hearing. I wouldn't be surprised. Unfortunately, Benny also confirms that April is indeed dead. Which is really sad because she knew something was up when she decrypted those files. She knew that there was a danger and she knew that it was a very serious situation and she wanted out. Unfortunately, she didn't make it out in time. Meanwhile, back at the safe house, Chris and Emily are hanging out. Chris is doing Sudoku and Emily is bored out of her mind. And eating candy! As bored as Emily is with Chris, she seems even more unhappy about Chris's replacement. Abby is able to patch up Betty, but she wants some answers because something else is going weird once again. She wants to know who this guy is, what the heck happened. Benny is hesitant at this point to get anyone else involved because 
he feared from the beginning. And the reason why he said he didn't tell Joe everything right away is because he feared for her safety. And now he's hesitant to even bring Abby into all of this because he just got his friend killed and he feels absolutely horrible about it. So this is a tough situation to be in because the more people they get involved, more people they potentially could put in danger. And Benny is very aware of this. Now I know some of you guys don't trust Benny, but I think that Benny actually doesn't have any ill intention. And I think he genuinely wants to be helpful in this situation. Yes, he's curious about it, but I don't think he has some type of hidden agenda. And in this episode and in past episodes, we've learned that Benny can actually be very useful. Meanwhile, Piper is upstairs reading a book that Joe has given her to do a book report on, and you see the blue lights in her arms light up. You hear a knocking, and it sounds like someone is knocking on the door, but when she looks to the door, there's nobody there. When she gets up, we see a door in the room, and it appears to be a door that wasn't there before. She opens it, and we see steps through what looks like a long cave with bats in it. It's like the bat cave. She's literally going into the bat cave. And then we hear Mia's voice say Piper, and she snapped back. It turns out she's just standing there in the middle of her room. So this wasn't a dream. I thought assumed that this was going to be a dream. It wasn't. This is something going on inside her head. Also worth noting is Piper doesn't remember what happened at all when she comes out of it. She can't remember it. All she remembers is reading in bed. Benny is still at the house while all of this is happening. Joe tells Benny that they were able to run an ID on the plate that he gave her, and that they were able to tie that plate back to Augur, which we know is attached to Kindred. So at this point, Joe is pretty certain that they have them. Benny, he's not so sure, and as we learn later, he's not wrong. Joe and Chris show up and arrest Kindred, and Kindred's only answer is, I've gone so easy on you. Joe seems pretty satisfied with this outcome, but it is a fleeing moment, because later on, when we get to the police station, Kindred is quickly released. Mia and Piper find Benny on their couch and give him a little bit of the third degree. In the car ride over with Chris and Joe, Kindred had warned Joe to enjoy it while they could, and he was right. The real world was waiting, and obviously Kindred has connections everywhere. He has friends in high places, he has the ability to hack into somebody's morphine drip. Why wouldn't he have the ability to go in and change up the records about the plates on the car that was tying his company to this encounter and shooting? Meanwhile, Benny has breakfast with Piper, Ed, and Mia. Alex comes in and finds this strange, handsome man having breakfast with his family. I don't know. I see a little love triangle happening potentially there with Alex and Joe and Benny and ooh, things could get a little messy. Ed is pretty anxious for Benny to up and leave because it's probably not the best environment for children to be around a man that someone is trying to kill. Meanwhile, Kindred gets released because as we know, Joe and Chris do not have enough evidence about all this corruption surrounding Kindred. Obviously, the DA wants proof and what little proof they had, Kindred was able to clean up. Back at the hospital, Ed runs into Abby and Ed confirms what we've been suspicious of all along. His cancer is back. As we know, Joe and the family do not know about this, so he asks Abby to keep that between the two of them. Back at the police station, Kindred is saying life as we know it is going to change. Something big is about to happen. I have a feeling we have another big reveal coming this season. I know there's a lot going on in the show, but I feel like I really want to know what Piper's purpose is. Kindred says a whole new world is out there for Piper and anyone helping her. So he's basically alluding and threatening to do harm to anyone around her, which we see almost immediately with Alex losing his job. Naturally, Chris and Joe are concerned about Emily because Kindred's hitman that killed April is still at large. We see the hitman pulling up to the safe house, bringing out his gun. We have a feeling that it's going to be the end of Emily. And the guy says he's looking for Wi-Fi and Chris just kind of lets him smile in his face and get in the car and leave. And I'm confused as to why Chris just let him walk off because technically he's on his property and was trespassing. I don't know, I feel like there was a missed opportunity to actually get this guy. Back at the police station on security footage of the man on the property, Benny identifies that man as the man who killed April. Well, Emily actually made like a makeshift modem out of scraps and stuff, and it's very possible that Kindred's people found her this way. For someone that worked for such a cryptic and covert company, she seems pretty reckless and sloppy, just as I feel like Kindred's guys are very sloppy. They're not doing a very good job at covering up whatever they're trying to keep secret. Joe suggests that Emily hack into some other type of connection to Kindred, either his lawyer or his financial planner, some other way for them to find evidence of a crime that he may have committed. Meanwhile, back in her room, Piper sees the door appear once more. She enters into what I'd like to call the back cave, and she actually walks up the steps. She sees another door at the top of the steps. She puts her hand up to the door, and she's instantly transformed back into Joe's house. Joe has pizza. It's as if she was never even gone. Y'all, I want some pizza right now. I don't know about you guys, but that sounds really good. I haven't had pizza in so long. 
Also, in case you didn't notice, Piper is on to Ed's secret about his illness. This indicates that Piper has some type of psychic ability or the ability to read minds, which we learn later is the case. Alex gets a phone call and then he informs the family that the company that he works for got bought out by Kindred. So it appears that Kindred is coming through on his promise to Joe that he will indeed be changing everything in her world and anyone around her that is helping her. When Joe explains to Alex that him being laid off all traces back to Piper and her involvement with this guy Kindred, he is 100% supportive of Joe going after this guy and getting him. It seems like Joe and Alex are a really good team and I'm really curious as to what caused them to split up. I think the writers want to keep us guessing about this and probably will be revealing it to us eventually but in the meantime I'd like to hear what you guys think as to why they may have gotten divorced. Benny goes to visit April's daughter. Obviously it's a very sad situation because of the loss of her mom. However we learn that April actually put a GPS on her laptop and she's been actually tracking her laptop through her iPad looks like. Benny calls Joe and he tells Sarah that he is tracking down the man that killed April. Meanwhile Piper has a conversation with Ed on the porch of the house and she confirms that she is able to have these abilities to kind of read mine. As we know, Piper knows that Ed is sick. When he asks her how does she know the things that she knows, she says it's like I can see it but not with my eyes. Joe goes to meet up with Benny outside the location of where this hitman lives. Benny has no chill because when he comes out of the building, Benny just goes chasing after him. When he goes to run around the side of the building, Benny heads him off and hits him. Great job, Benny. Unfortunately, the guy hits back. After a few punches are thrown, the man manages to get Benny on the ground but runs away when Joe pulls down the alleyway with her cop car. This guy, he just keeps getting away. But Benny doesn't come up empty handed. I told you he's useful. He got the guy's keys. Okay, so this part is where a lot of information came in and I had to actually rewind my DVR and I have to like go through this little bit by bit because there's a lot of information they throw at you. They find a book with three addresses written in it. One of the addresses is the safe house where they kept Emily. The other address is April's house. So these are both two houses where the hitman was probably targeting. Now the third address belongs to a man that Betty is familiar with. The gentleman is named Alan Wilkes. He's a co-founder of Augur Industries. Now Benny suspects that this guy was an anonymous source that was giving him information when he was investigating Kindred. When Wilkes died, the anonymous source went dark. Question being, why is there a dead guy on the hitman's list? Chris goes and pulls up the records and it turns out there was a break into his house, well his widow's house, about four days ago. And we also learn from Benny that this guy died four years ago. Meanwhile, Emily was able to get into Kindred's lawyer's files. Kindred has the same lawyer as this guy Wilkes. Emily found a contract that he had that was to be signed with Augur Industries. Two days before his death, they were about to sign this and it would have given all of his stock shares to his widow. Big surprise here, the contract was never signed, which means all the shares went to Kindred. So Kindred essentially killed his own partner. Well, we don't have confirmation on that, but I think there's a very good chance that Kindred did kill his own partner. Meanwhile, the girls and Ed go out for ice cream. Ed's driving the car. Ed passes out while he's driving and there's literally a huge tractor trailer about to hit the car head on. Mia is smart and she pulls the emergency brake but not quick enough for that truck to almost come right into them. And once again we see Piper use her powers to lift this truck up in the air and stop it from hitting them and then it just goes right back down gently. The kids are okay, Ed is okay for now, and nobody's hurt. However, Mia witnesses all of this and has a lot of questions for Piper, and essentially she asks the questions that any normal kid or adult would ask. Do you have superpowers? Obviously she knows something is going on here. I thought it was interesting how Piper actually put her hand on Mia's shoulder when she did this Jedi mind trick. What a cool adopted sister to have, someone that can actually move trucks. So back at the hospital, Mia tells Joe, this truck is coming for us, but, and then she looks at Piper, it just didn't hit us. Ed finally tells Joe that his cancer is back, and at this point, I think it's back worse than it was before, and he doesn't plan on fighting at this time. So this is very sad information for Joe. Meanwhile, Piper goes to get some snacks from a vending machine, and she's taken back into that place again, the Bat Cave. Literally, that door just seems to be able to appear wherever it wants. Like, now it's appearing right next to the vending machine. She enters into this cave, cavernous place with the steps. She walks up the steps and she knocks on the door. This place is like Narnia. It's like this whole other dimension in her head. I don't know how Kindred is accessing it, but obviously he's able to somehow hack into her head, or maybe it's already been there and he's been there all along, and have these conversations with her. When she goes to the door, it's what appears to be a museum, and Kindred is just casually sitting there. Are you enjoying the museum? What the heck? Kendra points out this painting that has a shade of blue and he tells Piper that's the first time this particular shade of blue has been ever used in art. 
He tells Piper that soon they're going to be seeing blue everywhere. This is actually an analogy Kindred is making to being around at a time where things were changing and when this was first discovered. He tells Piper that she's also part of what's going to change the world. When Piper asks Kindred who he is, he tells her he's somebody that would really like to see her. He also tells Piper that this little meeting is just for the two of them. That's why she doesn't remember him when she goes back. Piper is then taken back to her vending machine where thankfully she was able to get her snacks, which is very important. And that's when Mia asks the million dollar questions. Do you have superpowers? Guys, this was a great episode, a lot of information to process. Thank you for joining me on this recap. Again, if you're not on Twitter, you should follow me on Twitter and you should join Twitter. You know why? Because this show is really good and I'm hearing rumors from various industry professionals on Twitter itself that it might be on the chopping block and we do not want this show to end. We want this show to keep going. But if you're not on Twitter or if you're on Twitter and you're not active, it really helps if you tweet and hashtag the show. And if you live tweet during the show when it airs, that helps even more. Even if it's just one tweet that you can throw out there. It's really fun to live tweet a show if you've never done it because you can actually follow all of the cast members of this show and they usually live tweet too and sometimes they interact with you, they talk to you, they respond to you if you tweet them, they like your tweets. It's really exciting when you do that. So if that's not something you've done before and that's something you want to do and you want to have some interactions with the cast or if you have some questions for them, there's a very good chance that they will be active and answer your questions. I think it's really cool when a cast does that because it just shows that they care about their fans, they care about the fan community, and I really like this community of fans. I just want it to stay and I want it to keep growing. So if you're not on Twitter and you really want to help this show, go create an account on Twitter. It doesn't have to be your real name. Just create a fan account if you want and join up and live tweet when the show is on. Or if you miss the live tweet, just tweet about it whenever you watch it. That way it'll help the show because I think that networks actually take these things into account when they look at ratings. If something is trending, it's actually going to generate more marketing and interest for other people. People want to know what Emergence is. If you follow me on there, I promise I will interact with you. I will tweet you back. I will respond to you if you have any questions. I'm at Laurie's F. So guys, we need to keep the show on the air. So please help us if you can. Spread the word. Tell your friends. Get on Twitter. Let's get in there and get that hashtag running. Let's get in there and get some excitement going because I really think that can really help improve the ratings on this show. I think the networks look at these things. I feel like this show is very well done because it's very fast paced and everything that is being put into the show is with a very specific intention, meaning there's really no filler episodes. And I really want to make sure that this show stays on the air because it's something that you don't see on network television a lot. So once again, thank you guys for joining me. Let me hear your feedback. Let me hear comments about this episode, what you guys thought. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave a comment below. I'll try to respond. Also tweet me on Twitter. You can join our Facebook. Links are down below. Once again, links are down below to everything that I talked about. And I will see you guys in my next recap. Yeah.